Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. And we want to thank our newest patron. We want to say a huge thank you to Miss Linda. Thanks for your support. Yes, absolutely. As again, Patreon, there's exclusive videos that go up over there. And it's a wonderful community and it does enable us to keep doing this and focusing so much time on getting out this information to everybody. I encourage everybody to binge watch us wherever you can to catch up because we are not afraid of our track record. Um, and in fact, again, the regulars know that this is nothing that is surprising us. Everything that is coming out is stuff that we have totally expected, been expecting the entire time uh, in reality since I, you know, I started the channels seven years ago. So yeah, it's been a, a real wild ride, but here we are. We are coming to culmination of a certain time that you know we've we've gone through what many might consider to be uh, a part of the tribulation period. And I do think 2024 is in many ways the most challenging year we're going to face. Uh, as far as shock, uh, I do think we'll have a better idea of what the future is going to look like after 2024. 2024 is, 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 is shocking right now, obviously, to so many people. They, they just... The ones that have been kind of sleepwalking through life and thinking everything's going to go back to normal at some point in time, finally get into the point where you recognize that there's never going back to that old quote unquote normal. So what is in head, ahead of us? Well, uh, we've been trying to share uh, with you guys for seven years and, and we so are so grateful for our regulars that have been contributing right along and sharing your knowledge, your expertise, your feelings, your intuitions, what you have experienced in your lives. And it just really uh, it is something that we appreciate. And we're so glad to have you guys with us. Mm -hmm. and, and definitely, you know, share in comments. We do our best to try to keep that a safe place to comment because people are really hungry for other people's understanding. Um, I know that we're not always going to agree on everything, but if we can pick out the many things that we do agree on and support each other there, I think that's how we're going to grow this type of energy force that we have to help protect as many as possible and um, put into, into place a, a timeline where the light is going to be much stronger. Um, but it's going to take all of us getting along and appreciating each other's differences and uh, just being kind to one another because that's that's what helps the light grow. That's what gives it its power. So here we see this is from the WhiteHouse.gov. Biden-Harris administration announces initiative to bolster cybersecurity of U.S. ports. Today, the Biden-Harris administration will issue an executive order to bolster the security of the nation's ports alongside a series of additional actions that will strengthen maritime cybersecurity, fortify our supply chain, and strengthen the United States industrial base. The administration will also announce its intent to bring domestic onshore manufacturing capacity back to America to provide safe, secure cranes to U.S. ports, thanks to over $20 billion investment from uh, in the U.S. port infrastructure under Biden's Investing in America agenda. You know, um, absolutely far too little, far too late in the game. Uh, it's, 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 it's kind of laughable in so many ways. When you look at where we are and all the manufacturing that has been sent elsewhere, it's... It, it's something that you have to take into consideration in a historic perspective. What, what really made the difference in World War II was the fact that America was the place that had the in, insane manufacturing capacity. And once that kicked up and into effect, there was no way to relatively small countries of Germany and Japan, along with their ally, Italy could possibly uh, compete. And, you know, again, that war had its purposes. You know, of course, we are told something historically, and then there's the real 
causes for the war. And part of the causes for the war were to, again, shift the power structure. And in World War II, what happened after World War II? Well, you had these two opposing blocs, apparently opposing the Soviet Union and the U.S. as the real powerhouses of the world. And then we had this apparent collapse of the Soviet Union into vassal states, smaller states, uh, which they originally were before the coming together of the Soviet Union. Of course, borders are always changing. And then we had apparently one nation left as the lone superpower. Now everything has shifted. And, and going back years, decades ago, the manufacturing was shifted out of the USA, primarily to China and other, other countries. Now the USA doesn't have the capability to truly wage war against the BRICS nations for a prolonged period of time. In fact, everything as as far as the supply chain goes from you know the oil reserves to ammunition and just the manufacturing capacity is not there for this war that has been totally done on purpose by the real power structure because the usa and nato have taken uh the true control structure to the point that they expected it to go. And now it's time to initiate in something new. There were apparently cyber attacks. And, and this is, again, the thing that will get us arguing. No. Oh, OK. Wait a minute. There were outages yesterday. Well, it had to be those X-Class flares. Well, was it X-Class flares or were these cyber attacks? Which were they? This is, again, when, when the big ones hit, we're not going to know. We're going to wonder, was it Cascadia? Did Cascadia cause the San Andreas, which then caused New Madrid to go? You know, hey, everything is shut down across the whole country. Is this natural or are we being invaded? You know, meanwhile, the migrants are going to go crazy and there are going to be sleeper cells taking open control of certain areas. This is all in the very, very near future. And the reality is there's going to be mass confusion and we will probably not get straight answers. But here you have pharmacies nationwide report outages in wake of cyber attacks. You know, the outages that we had were pretty far reaching. And we've heard from a lot of you guys out there in the comments. And thank you. Please do keep sharing your comments. Please do keep sharing uh, these videos. You know, we have Patreon members that are so supportive that they're over on Patreon, they'll watch the video, they'll come over, they'll click on YouTube or they'll click on Rumble and they'll thumbs up them just to show support and just to, you know, try to help push uh, the awakening to a higher level. And so again, we want to thank you guys for that. The healthcare situation in the United States is such that you have so many people that are so dependent on these things that literally if they can't get them for prolonged periods of time, their lives are in danger. They are so in need of these things, whether or not they're good for them in the first place. Um, irregardless of that, it's that we become dependent, chemically dependent on certain substances. And then if you immediately take that away from the system, it could cause the system to crash. And then there are those that, you know, simply haven't had uh, the knowledge, uh, the understanding to start looking for natural alternatives. Uh, you know, there, we are heading towards that time where we are going to have real disruptions. And you have Marco Rubio warning that the Chinese cyber attack will be 100 times worse than an AT&T outage. He said, I don't know the cause of the AT&T outage, but I do know it'll be 100 times worse when China launches a cyber attack on America on the eve of, of Taiwan invasion. Well, on the eve of the Red Dawn invasion of the U.S. is really the reality. And it won't just be cell service they hit. It will be your power, your water, and your bank. And so, you know, again, do you have anything that's worth trade? Uh, a lot of you guys do have silver on hand, have um, anything that's tradable. Anything that's tradable, food, you know, all sorts of things. Skills, uh, skills yes. Right. You know, uh, food, skills, teas. Are you, are you good at planting? Are you good at growing? Can you grow herbs? You know, when I look into this, 
seeds I, I i think the most important thing is to understand how to grow different herbs for medicine plant medicine is so extremely it's going to be very important in this time if people are not able to get what they need um the medicine that keeps their body go, uh, going you know i've spent a lot of time trying to study and figure out uh primary things that if taken away what would people be able to replace them with and take into account you still have the growing process but if you have the knowledge i mean that is priceless to so so many uh, medicinal understanding in a time when they're fixing to pull the rug out from underneath people people are going to need help absolutely as i have to run out of the room real quick to turn my el turn off my elderberry hibiscus yes. tea um, that's one of my favorite things to drink. Um, again, grow whatever you possibly can grow. I think that is a great idea. Most people don't remember, perhaps, that all congressional members were issued satellite phones from the U.S. military in preparation for this Chinese cyber attack, or possibly a solar flare. What we've gotten from the guides is they want to fry the... Uh, the grounded infrastructure, everything that is landline base, everything that is old technology. This is part of a big redo. Yes, our SET. Um, so what they want to do is utilize Elon and all his you know, Starlink satellites. Everything is going to be wireless. Now, all those satellites, all that technology, all these signals, they're not good for human health. And no matter what they want to tell you, they are not good for human health. But now, even in the boondocks, you can get Starlink. Even in the most remote places, you could get Starlink. There's a reason why there's tens of thousands of these satellites up in there. They're getting rid of the old, uh, old technology. Everything is shifting. And so, again, they want to uh, just totally get rid of it. They don't want you having options. And that's part of what's coming. The U.S. conducted an offensive cyber attack on an Iranian spy ship. And, uh, you know, again, it's working in both ways, but ultimately the system works both sides. That's the big reveal. Here we have San Diego County mass releasing migrants onto the streets because they ran out of funding. So they're just letting them out in the streets. Um, and they're from all over the world. This reporter is just saying he can't keep up with all the countries they're coming from. Everywhere. They're coming from everywhere. And now hundreds are being released. Fifth bus of migrants arrive in San Diego. There's going to be more. They're releasing them in, in you know batches of 300 at a time onto the streets the amount of chaos that is happening right now is getting hard to cover he was also talking about these ngos again these not for profit organizations so many of them tied in some way or another with the un or with other uh companies that are being directly and indirectly supported by the UN. Again, a lot of times the money comes from FEMA, which comes from us and goes to them. So in effect, again, we are truly funding our own uh, migrant invasion when you get down to it. That's what the system does. This is what the system does. They get us to fund it. And what does this mean? This means we, we work. You know, there is an old saying that you work until sometime in April or maybe May for the government. And then after that, you start working for yourself when you take all the taxes into consideration. Well, again, so much of your blood, sweat, and tears is funding all the chaos. This is just how crazy the system is. Because the system, again, is for the system. It's all about the system. It's insanity. And here you go. I mean, why hasn't anybody been charged with anything on this why hasn't anybody been arrested in connection with this we understand what is happening you know again they're constantly opening up holes we we see government troops you know cutting down wires and letting them in and again nothing against immigration it's just again that people are being manipulated on all sides 
these these immigrants have been manipulated too because often their 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 homes have been wiped out through you know in my opinion man made uh, disasters of one sort or another. There's been floods everywhere. There's been fires everywhere. There's been uh, the food supply attacked everywhere, and the wars are nonstop. Nonstop. When you look at, at what's going on as this Fox News headline, 7.2 million illegals entered under the Biden administration. Millions were already here before that. That That's bigger than the population of 36 of the 50 states. It, that's huge. The amount of people that are in this country right now ready to go. They're just going to cause all sorts of chaos with this influx. And that is the purpose of this ultimately it's about creating the conditions where everything will kind of self-destruct so then they could usher in you know their new system which will include you know everything you can imagine in the line of cybersecurity and in the line of intrusion into everybody's lives except for the elites uh, you know you have so many random acts of violence that's going on here you can't keep up with it. You know, people have been attacked and and it's been ongoing over in, in Europe for years with all sorts of attacks, brutal attacks going on constantly. It, it, it's just insane. But this is how they bring it about. This is how they take down from the inside the, the most heavily armed country on the planet when you have this many people infiltrating from the inside, when you have a military that is mostly abroad, and again, not in very good health, and again, only having one week's worth of ammo if a real war starts out globally, it's, it's all lined up in such a way as to cause the whole deck of cards to completely collapse. And, you know, again, they're starting to come online. Now, these could be just random acts and not necessarily uh, have people being told from above what to do. But they will be told at some point in time. And I think that will coincide with a massive um, outage of communications. You know, whether you want to call it a cyber attack or anything else. 10 in custody, 16 wanted in separate Times Square attacks. Just craziness going on around uh, the country and the globe. And here you see, we just learned how Chicago, Illinois is planning on paying for their illegal immigrant invasion. Uh, American taxpayers are going to be looking at new taxes and tax increases in billions of dollars. And, you know, this right here is Illinois State Senator Dan McConkie. Yeah, we got the annual budget. You're all going to be paying a lot more taxes to fund the illegal immigration invasion. Does that make you feel a little bit ticked? Mm. You know, I look at the politicians and they're, they seem just fine to sit there and announce that we're going to be paying more taxes and they're, and, and their income keeps going up and up and up as well. It doesn't matter if they're on the right. It doesn't matter if they're on the left. It doesn't matter where they're at. They, give they just they give themselves raises and it just goes on and on. Well, what if what if we were to say, hey, if you take, you know, unless you ratchet down your pay some until we start seeing something that we like, you know, then what? What if we were to... I mean, really band together and say, you're not going to keep getting raises for us to get screwed. There has to be radical change, you know, because they it's not even their salaries because, you know, you, you look at some people like the Pelosi's and, and the like. And, you know, if you look at the annual salary, they have to work a thousand years to, to make the money they've made while they're in their position because there's much more lucrative ways to make it than their salaries, even though their salaries are many times the average person's. I mean, if there were some type of consequence where, you know, he's not going to see X amount of money unless so many people are in good shape, well, then something would happen. But you can see it really doesn't matter, right? left since they're all getting raises they're all happy they're just happy to report to you how bad it's going to 
happen to you. It's horrible. Meanwhile, radioactive waste dumped off the Los Angeles coast, and a lot of this waste is really being dumped there from the hospitals and the medical facilities. It's been ongoing for years. You know, the, it's just the entirety of the system is completely corrupt. It's always been corrupt. It's just that it's becoming apparent to more and more people just how corrupt it's been. It has always been corrupt, and maybe it's you know at a peak of corruption. When you look to this, Michigan State board members warn state homeschool registration list is a precursor to unwarranted home entry. When you look at Michigan, for instance, and Michigan's really pretty, been pretty much in line with California, uh, Washington, Oregon, with a lot of the laws, um, they, they again, don't view your kids as being yours. Your, your kids are wards of the state. The state will take them any time it wants. And this is, again, it, it's very much what we see over in in uh, the communist countries. But whether we have a communist dictatorship or some other form of dictatorship, it's all dictatorship really coming down uh, from what we would call the elites, from these secret societies that control uh, all the politicians. And you know, corporations are, again, more important and stronger than nation states. Nation states are just tools. And so, you know, here they are talking about these things, and it's just the way they view our lives as if our lives are not ours. They, and that's really how they view it. They, they don't view that we have uh, any sort of right to self-determination. And that's not what this whole creation is about. It's all about us each being a unique individual with our own decisions to make anything any belief structure and this is what still ticks a lot of people that that still are totally indoctrinated and don't realize that any belief structure that says there's one way is is of the system it is it definitely is of the system and this is really unnerving because they're trying to make it easier for you know people who homeschool to be invaded um, and their their structure, the way they live. I mean, parents have every right to teach their children how to do things like garden, um, fix a house, make a building, take care of pets, you know, take care of themselves however they see fit. And every day they're just taking this ability a little, a little further back out of the parents' hands. And believe me, that's very deliberate. Michigan State's asking residents to house illegals in their home. And this has been ongoing in, in the UK and Ireland, et cetera, et cetera, for quite a while. Why would they do this? Well, again, what's the purpose? Well, look to the illegals. Who are they dependent on? They're in a new place. This is not their home. This is not where they grew up, if they don't have all the connections here, they don't have people they've known all their lives here, they have a complete dependency upon the state and upon the system. They're banking on getting their cards refilled each month with, with you know, funds, resources. If that stops, what are they going to do? They're so far away from where they grew up. They're in a new land. They're totally dependent on the system. Now, they want to, they'd love to kick us all out of our homes. They'd love to send us all off to new places so we could be totally dependent on the system. They don't want people growing their own food. Why? Because then you could be self sufficient. This is the biggest part of their plan. They cannot have us self sufficient. They need us sickly, ill, and dependent on their medications. If we are dependent on their medications to just survive, and I've said this going back like seven years ago, that they would love nothing other to have an entire world of people with an immune compromised condition where, you know, your payment is just, you know, shelter and your medicine to keep you alive and some food that's not going to keep you in good health. This is their ideal. 
this is this is what they are striving for a tranquil sedated completely compliant dependent populace on the planet mm -hmm. and you know what it doesn't really matter uh the left or the right, they're all going to say whatever they need to say to get into office. You know, I don't think I've ever heard a politician lie more than when they're up for election. It's like they will just say, and, and they have great words of wisdom too. They say all the right things. You know, they say, oh, this is going to change, that's going to change. But look what happens. Things just keep getting worse and we keep losing our our freedoms and we keep losing plenty of money and bills keep going up not down and it's just getting very difficult so there's not one of them to me that i see is worthy for even one vote i mean they have done nothing for us but yet they stand on their pulpits and they they pretend like they can and they can't because they're not the ones in charge yeah and you know again watch everybody carefully you know again they'll always rise people up to be our saviors that end up being worse than the the previous ones uh and again where do you turn then you you really have to uh, just discern for yourself here is the president of el salvador who um has been looked at critically because he he has uh been accused of being a dictator a total dictator well you know Again, I don't trust anybody. I don't trust any politicians, none. And we don't trust him either. Yeah, I would look carefully to all of them. But here he is calling out the U.S. saying, you know, there's dark forces taking over the U.S. You might not see it yet, but it's happening. Absolutely. And he talks about if you want globalism to die here, too, you must be willing to unapologetically fight against everything and everyone that stands for it. Fight for your freedoms. Fight for your rights. What what did he do? He's he has been uh, in charge over there for five years now, and it went from being one of the most dangerous countries in the Americas to actually the safest in the Americas at this point in time. And you know they did cut down on crime and gang activity dramatically. Um, I think you have to be very careful though, because you know a lot of people were jailed, and so. You know, there's there's always the risk of swinging too far over in another way. Um, but this is what we have in these ages, in the dark age and coming out of the dark age. And I wish that we were heading straight into a golden age. I do think it's possible on an individual level. But the typical, typical progression is going from a dark age into what we call a bronze, then a silver, then a golden age, which does take thousands of years. And of course, you know, it's not easy to be patient when you see such chaos. But patient uh, perhaps is, is something that needs to be cultivated. Right now, again, I think the most important thing for people is to not be dependent on the system. That's the greatest danger. Don't be dependent on the system. Uh, if you're dependent on the system, you've already given away your freedoms. You've already given away uh, any hope of, of being an individual. And even if you stick out and look a little bit odd, you are you and, and you should be a, a unique version, a unique expression of that one uh, source of all of us. I, I still see all the time comments where people are binge watching some of the ones we've done on the religious control matrix and you know they're they're just comp they're just saying things out of fear because they'll say be careful now you don't want to offend god it's, it's like they don't even have a clue of of the real creator and what the real creator is all about all they've done is taken the mainstream version of it which is a fear-based version and they're just they're afraid to discover something for themselves they're afraid to be sticking out from the herd and again, they do condition us through fear. But hey, you know, again, rise above the fear because the fear is something that lowers our frequency. You know, and in, in so many ways, it's understandable, too, because um, what they do is they shun each other if they don't believe exactly what they're supposed to believe. So they turn on each other. You know, I, unfortunately, sadly, 
I, I've had family members completely turn on me because I decided to figure out what I'm about. I decided to figure out what I am capable of. And because I didn't believe the way they believed, I mean, I have no problems. You know, If they want to go to church and read their books, that's great. But please, I'm not complaining about you. Please don't complain about me. I'm supportive of you. Please just be supportive of me. Please look at me with curiosity, not like I'm some freakish animal that's going to go to hell because I want to do something different. I, I think that's where the problem lies is people are like, oh, you better be careful as if there's some threat from from who's God, you know. But the reality is, too, religion has been used to slaughter more people than like a anything else on the planet. It, you know, religion and political ideology go hand in hand and in some ways they're one and the same. And it, I, I don't understand why people can't see that. You know, they're so worried that other people might see something differently that they have to place threats, you know. But it's like, can't you see how many people have been hurt under the name of religion and it's just continuing to go on it's not like it's getting any better no absolutely so don't fear to be you be a unique version of you that's really what what the big plan is be you because everyone else is taken absolutely again thanks for your support guys look forward to your comments source bless and namaste namaste